Hi, I'm James Ledbetter. I'm the editor of Inc. Magazine and Inc.com. I'm very pleased today to be interviewing Daniel Lebetsky, the founder of Kind Bars. Daniel, thank you for talking to us today. Thank you, Jim. I'm happy to be here. Uh, one of the big breaks, as I understand it, for Kind Bars was getting into Whole Foods. Uh, and getting them to accept the product. And how, how did you do that? So Whole Foods back in 2004, so I had a very deep relationship with them even from before, from my Peace Works years. Okay. And so when we came up with Kind, they wanted to give me a hand, but the product was very different from what was out there in the nutritional bar set. Right. Everything in the nutritional bar set was, and in, still today, was an emulsion, a paste, something yeah. that was in a Tastes opaque like wrapper. <laughs> Every one of our large competitors today, still their number one ingredient is some form of sugar, and it's a macerated type of product in a, in a paste, so you can't really recognize the ingredients. So when they saw our product, they didn't know where to put it, and we're like, well, it's a nutrition bar. It's like, no, but that's not a nutrition bar. Let us show you what a nutrition bar looks like. And I'm like, that's, that's the, the point. <laughs> we yeah. want to do it differently. But so how did that how did that feel? I mean, you know, you, you could you could see the vision. You could see where things were going to go and they were and they were standing in the way. What did that feel like? Um, fun. Actually, it was fun because it was frustrating, but fun because you you kept seeing progress. You kept breaking through walls. It kept so it was not depressing. That part of it was not. It was just fun. How how long was that Whole Foods process from the original approach to them actually saying yes? I don't remember, but it wasn't at the chain level. It was store by store. Yeah. You, we went door by door to every single Whole Foods store. Right. They, I talked to every buyer at every one of these stores. I crisscrossed the nation. You know, if you tell me where you're from, I probably can tell you <laughs> where your favorite supermarket is. I, I, I went from Akron, Ohio, where I would go to West Point Market, to Los Angeles, to Philadelphia, to Chicago, I remember in Los Angeles, you'd get up at 5 a.m. in the morning and the Whole Foods buyers always were up at 5 a.m. and they were the first ones to see you. So you had to see them early. So 5 a.m. I was at the Whole Foods stores and I knew that at 7 a.m. I could go see the Rayleigh's buyer, then this one, then this one, and I would finish at 11 p.m. at night, you know, and they were selling one box, you know, I was so excited I would sell, you know, 30, 50 dollars worth of product. <laughs> But it was like the beginning was very exciting. Yeah. So after all of those road trips, you know, from supermarket in Houston to Iowa, wherever, what was what really made the business take off? Well, first of all, I think it was the sampling. Once we started letting people try the product, the word of mouth impact, and the, it really helped us a ton. The transparent wrappers were very iconic. We got distribution in places like Kroger, uh, Starbucks, Whole Foods, and just all of those things together, people trying the product, just 2009, 2010, 2011 helped to start growing, you know, triple digits for, basically for, we were doubling sales for like over 10 years in a row. When we're growing really, really fast and at some point we had, I don't know, maybe when we had 50 or 100 team members, one of my team members said, you know, Daniel, it's so easy for you that you're extroverted and on the plane you're giving out kind bars to all these strangers, but some of us are shy, you know, it's mm. very hard to give up, to give kind bars to stranger. And it, it made me realize that they got me all wrong, that they thought it was easy for me to do that. Like, it is so hard when I'm on a plane and I'm exhausted and I'm afraid of rejection to stand up and offer to a stranger a kind bar. And what if they make me a face and say, no, I don't want you. Right. It's not easy, but yeah. I rise to try to you know, do the kind thing and both surprise a stranger with a kind bar, but also let them try our product. But do you ever just cut loose and have fun? Are you really always uh, peddling it, the product? It's not that I'm like an intense, boring nerd, but kind is on my mind a lot. Like when I'm with my children and my wife, yes, I what enjoy are you doing? a ton. You on a I, I, we love You're watching swimming. movies, yeah. I love being with them, they're delicious. I love being with my kids and my wife. But if we walk across the store, I also want them to see that I'm working hard and I want them through example to not think that it came easy because they didn't see the first 10 years where I could not make ends meet. So for me, it's really important that they see me still working hard. Do you have an expectation that, that one or some of your children will take over the business one day? You know, my dad did something very special when I, I actually wanted to go work with him. And he and what, was doing what? 
he sold watches and duty-free stores. And he started from nothing. He came you know, after, as, with a third grade education after being a Holocaust survivor, first to Mexico, then we immigrated to the United States. But he built himself from nothing. And I loved him so much. And I wanted to go work with him. And he pushed me to do my own thing. And he wanted me to figure things on my own. And so I think for my kids, that's what I want to do. I want them to figure out what's meaningful to them, to not, I don't want to live my life through them in the sense that I want them to do this or that or that. I want them to figure it out. So I don't have any expectations. Whatever they decide to do, hopefully they'll find something that gives them purpose, that gives them meaning. You are uh, rightfully proud of a lot of the, the social work of, and the uh, uh, philanthropy that, that KIND does. Do you think that that is vital for every business? I mean, do you think every business should have a social mission? I think it's vital for our world and I think it's vital for my personal meaning and satisfaction. The problem is that a lot of businesses try to take a shortcut and they're like, oh, this seems sexy. This seems to be vogue or avant-garde and they try to adopt some sort of fake cause and the consumer can smell it. Detail, yeah. detect that it's not real, not sincere, not authentic and it actually can create backlash. So I think if you really believe in what you're doing and you really find a way to give back to society, it'll give you more fulfillment, it will give your team more fulfillment, it'll be more energizing for your community and more impactful for the world, but it has to be authentic. I, I think there's so many scams and so many shallow efforts to make it seem and then people see through it and it actually probably hurts the brand mm. because it loses legitimacy. Kind is coming up on its 15th anniversary and I'm curious how, how you think you have changed as a leader over that time? What's different now about you and the way you run things than when you started? The things that have changed are that I've been able to learn how to let people soar and guide me and teach me and how to empower people to take us to the next level. And I'm surrounded by amazing people. Remember, I started paying for the invoices, getting payments, right. delivering the product, everything, every yeah. single aspect. And today, somebody better than me does every one of those functions. We have a formidable head of manufacturing, an incredible head of marketing, within marketing, incredible people in each of the departments and sales and IT. And it's such a pleasure seeing people that are masters of their art do things so much better and learn and learn. Is there, is there one thing that you find it really hard to let go of? I find it hard to let go of the principle of grit and commitment. I remember at one of the trade shows, one of my mentors, not every one of my mentors gave me the right advice always, but I remember somebody telling me, I don't remember who it was, but I remember somebody said, you know, it's not presidential that you're like opening up all the boxes and carrying the boxes, you know, at some point you need to behave Executive a little bit presence. differently. Yeah. And, and I tried it for like, one month and it just did not feel right and it just felt so unauthentic to me and I just went back and I still today you know if we need to carry some boxes I'll carry the boxes I was just on a trip uh, on a vacation with my my wife is the most patient person in the world because we're like on a date very romantically and I see a storm I'm like I'm sorry give me one second I need to reset the shelf and I, I keep doing that <laughs> the day that I stop doing that you will add up all of those things and then it'll be the day that I've lost my passion for the business and my commitment to, to it. So I, I probably could afford to at this stage, I have 700 team members to relax, but I'm terrified that if I ever stop giving it everything I've got and I stop being in the grind or on the grind or whatever the expression stop is. Stop grinding. Stop grinding, that, that I would look back five years later and that would be the moment with mediocrity started seeping into who I am and into who my organization is. I feel like we always need to give it our best. I feel like we have to always have a commitment to excellence and to do it with kindness, but with that entrepreneurial spirit. And that the minute you lose that entrepreneurial spirit, you become a commodity or you start losing your, what, made, what got us to this point. I'm James Ledbetter. Thank you, Daniel Levesky from KIND. It's a pleasure. <laughs>